I know it's been a while, but this is my 1988 Argo Magnum. And like most of us in our old age, my machine has an issue with sagging. On this old side shot, you can see that the front and back are much higher than the middle. With the body sagging like this, the body supports must be badly damaged, and there's just not enough room above the tires to run my tracks, and this problem is just going to get worse over time. Another reason I want to fix the sag, besides the obvious, is that I eventually plan to build an enclosure for this rig to help me carry more gear, and also to keep that gear dry. If you didn't already know, Argo bodies are made out of a two-part clamshell, top here and bottom there. They're attached to each other along this black rubber strip that runs all the way around the machine. Underneath of the rubber, the body halves are held together with aluminum rivets. Those rivets span every few inches, the entire way around the machine. Before I split the body, I'm going to remove this old outboard mount. This isn't strictly necessary, uh, but it'll make removing the rubber and eventually the rivets a lot easier. Also, I plan on replacing this old mount at some point in the hopefully not too distant future. The seam where the rubber connects is the best spot I could figure to cut it. It's not that difficult to cut, and once it is cut, it comes help. off pretty easy. You wanna help? Not likely, hey buddy. Next up, I have to drill through all the rivets. Luckily, these are all aluminum rivets, so drilling them out isn't too bad. A 5 30 seconds drill bit makes pretty quick work for the rivets. So many rivets, and these are the ones I just bothered to pick up for the sake of the shot. Because the exhaust exits through the top portion of the body, we need to take that off as well. Luckily for us though, on Magnums at least anyway, you can get away with just removing the exhaust tip, which is only held in place with a few strings. It's uh, harder to get out of there than it looks, I promise. And the last thing I need to do up front is remove the fan shroud and brake cooler hose. There are only two bolts that hold this in, so it's no big deal. There are a few other things that I removed off camera as well, like throttle cables, winches, and the fuel filler neck. Alright, so we've now got our clamshell almost fully separated. You can see there's nothing actually holding it together anymore in there. Um, and that means that I can see what it is that I tore this open to see. And that's these guys right here. So this is the support that I was talking about earlier. See where it runs that way and then a little bit back as well. That helps to kind of keep everything together and secure. And uh, we'll also eventually hold the weight when I go to put a, um, a topper on it. Um, so, this is what I was looking to find. It doesn't show up very well on camera, but that is really bent. See this, uh, this little bit of square tubing here is pretty flat across the center, but as you get out past uh, that cross member there, it really starts to bend. It's a little bit hard to show that on the camera, but there's quite a bend to it. Um, and that's because I think this side took a lot more of the weight and so that other side. There's a bit of a bend there too, but it's not so bad. Um, and the other thing too, and the reason this isn't fully separated is because if we look right in here, see how the zoom goes for us. Whew. Yeah, that is pretty rotten. So it's around this point that the scope of the project changed. Originally, I had planned on just remaking this support that I'm removing here, but now I'm thinking that instead, I'll make a whole new upper frame that goes most of the way around the machine, complete with some additional legs to help support it. Off camera, I lifted the fuel tank out, and now I'm cutting these old cross braces off. They're too thin and rusty to be a part of the new frame. In fact, here's a side-by-side -side comparison between the old and new tubing. The new tubing is slightly over 1 8 of an inch thick, whereas the old tubing is basically bent sheet metal. Looking at this, it's pretty clear why some of the older Argo bodies bent so badly when they have heavy tops or enclosures on them. After welding those braces on, I cut the new cross members to length and drilled holes for the through bolts to hold them down. The drill press and vise help make sure that the holes are lined up for the new bolts, because god knows I couldn't drill a straight hole if my life depended on it. Uh, using those holes as a guide, I'm able to drill straight through the braces at the proper point and attach them with the true bolt. With those cross members and braces built up, we can start cutting metal for the main part of the frame that runs the length of the Argo. And then we can weld them into place. 
Uh, we have to do each side in two parts though, because there are some risers in the Argo body that prevent it from being a straight line, but uh, I'll talk a little bit more about those later. With the tacks in place, I brought the frame outside to weld the rest of the way around the square tubing. It's better to do this outside of the machine, where I don't have to worry about the heat or sparks melting the Argo's plastic body. This was also the job that convinced me to upgrade my little toy 120 volt welder to a much better 240 volt multiprocess welder. At least that's the excuse I'm giving right now for these ugly welds. So with everything welded up and put back into place, it appears that we have really excellent rigidity. I can hardly move that at all. But if we head up to the front, we can see that there is some movement here that still needs to be reinforced. If we take a look at the other side, I've already made a support up and tacked into place, and the arm on that side has excellent rigidity. Building the support arms is a pretty simple task. They're more or less all built the same way. First, I just found a place on the frame to attach the support to and mark the location for the bolt hole. Then, the square tubing gets drilled out, and using that same tubing as a guide, drill out the frame on the arc. And finally, I can just weld in the remaining parts of the support using a triangle to keep everything more or less straight. Uh, you may notice that instead of cutting a 90 degree corner on the support at two 45 degree angles and then welding them together like I did for every other corner on this build, uh, this one I just put well, this was equal parts an experiment to see if this side would have more or less deflection as a result of the butt weld, and also laziness. Now, as a note, all the footage from this point on in the video was actually lost at one point during a transfer from my phone to the computer. Uh, I did manage to use a recovery program to get most of it back, um, but if some of the shots seem too short or some details seem kind of skimped over, that would be why. Uh, it's also why this video took way longer to come out than it should have. Now that we have the front done up, we can start on the back. But remember earlier when I said that the Argo body has risers to stop me from doing this all in one piece? These are what I was talking about. The solution is pretty simple. I just welded the rear section on the outside of the front, and that gave me enough clearance. On the other side, I had a slightly larger gap and needed to use an additional plate for clearance purposes. And of course, the rear suffers from the same lack of support that the front did, and it gets a similar treatment. This time though, I attached a bar to the internal hitch supports and ran it all the way across the back of the machine, then added the support arms to each side of that. Building these support arms was the same as the front, more of lining things up, more wishing I had a third arm to hold things, and more tack welding. And finally, I boxed the rear of the machine in as well. This wasn't part of the original plan, but I liked the idea of some support in the back to help with the weight of an outboard or a ladder that I may add to the back of the machine later on down the road. But for now, the frame is more or less finished. I also added a bit of angle to each of the support arms, just for a little bit of added strength. All that's left to do is paint the frame and start the reassembly process. Uh, I did pick away at a few other things while the frame was out, like replacing all the fuel lines, painting the floors, uh, and removing this winch plate, which was getting a little bit rusty. It's only held in with a few screws, and after a bit of grinding with a wire wheel, it's ready for paint. I also replaced this foam gasket that runs along the perimeter of the Argo and helps it to seal against water. The old gasket was original to the machine and had zero sponginess, we'll call it, left in it. The new seal I just cut from some adhesive-backed foam and laid it into place. I've already flow tested this machine a few times and it's held up pretty well. At this point, I couldn't help but to jump up and test the new frame. I know this isn't a very scientific test, but even with all of my body weight bouncing on top of the frame, uh, there's very little movement, which is just perfect. Now it's time to attach the body to the new frame, and to do it, I chose these stainless steel bolts. Their wide, flat head makes them the perfect candidate for sitting under the body and holding it to the frame without getting into the way of the tires and tracks. Uh, here they are underneath the body. I added a little bit of RTV under each one of the heads to stop any potential water ingress. And then I dropped my phone. 
After I picked my phone back up, I drilled a lot of holes into my machine. I mean, a lot of holes. Each one gets a washer and lock nut before being cut down to size. For whatever reason, two and a half inches was the only size I could buy these in, that's why they stick out so bad. Next up are just a few quick while I'm in there type tasks I tackled before I put the body house back together. For example, here I have the floor painted, uh, and this is a set of wires I've made up from an old set of jumper cables that run from the front battery all the way to the back of the machine where I eventually plan to have a second battery bank for running either an electric trolling motor or a jet drive. I haven't decided yet. And the last thing that needs to happen is that I need to replace those back rest supports that I cut off earlier in the video. Unfortunately, almost none of that footage survived, but here's the finished product just before it was painted. And at last, we can stick the two halves back together again. Uh, not like that. There we go. I got the existing holes to fit over on my new, larger supports there just by using a heat gun to heat them up until they could form their way to a tight seal past the plastic a little earlier that day. All that's left to do now is to rivet the body back together and put on the black weather strip. Most, but not all, of the body holes lined up pretty nicely. Those that refused to line up, I brought in most of the way back together using that little pry tool you can see here sticking out of the body, and then drilled a new hole and inserted the rivet into that. Unfortunately, this is the last bit of footage that survived the computer transfer error. What I do have, though, are a few photos I've just taken which show how straight the body now sits. You'll have to forgive the tires being off, the Argo is once again getting new outside bearings after its guiding season. According to the hour meter on the machine, I've run the machine for about 50 hours since rebuilding the body reinforcement frame. During that time, I've had the machine flirting with a 1,000 pound payload capacity a few times, but so far it's held up perfectly. I can't say the same for the motor, however. During the fall deer season, my Arco was down on power and starting very hard. In the next video, we'll remove the engine and try to bring some life back into this old Kohler engine. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.